Riley. And on this episode of Salty Snaps, I'm gonna go find people to talk about upcoming events and do my job for me. Hello! Hello. Can you guys tell me about what's happening on campus? Well, this Saturday, November 16th, the Freshman Class Council and Intramurals are sponsoring the Turkey Bowl. The Turkey Bowl, baby! Yeah, baby! Uh, let's see, Saturday, November 16th, from 3 to 5 p.m., there will be cider and donuts. But what are we actually doing there, Putnam? This Saturday, it will be a flag football tournament. Uh, what you'll do is you'll make teams of eight, and you guys will compete for bragging rights. Woo! Bragging rights are the best, baby. There's going to be a pie eating contest halfway through, so you want to be there. Am I right? What it do, baby? <laughs> what it do, baby? No. <laughs> Turkey Bowl, this Saturday, 3 to 5. November 16th, Market. The Turf. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, Bobby? <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good, just chilling. Just chilling. Um, so, do you uh, know anything about the Mr. Minor pageant coming up? No, what's that? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you about it. So, not this Friday, but the following Friday. Okay, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. The 22nd? That, that's it? Yeah. Um, there's going to be a Mr. Minor pageant where we can ask all the men our favorite questions and they can show off their talents. Um, at 6.30, though, they're going to have a mocktail hour mm. and we can mingle with the men of Minor. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Um, so we'll be <laughs> in chewing at 7.30. Mocktail hour starts at 6.30. I will see you there. You will. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> I hear I hear Christmas. Kaylee! Hi, Riley. How's it going? Awesome. So, uh, can you tell me what's happening? What's happening? Yeah, what's up? Today? And yeah, whatever. <laughs> what is happening today? <laughs> what day is it? Tickets go on sale for Winter Formal today. 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 Classy Christmas Winter Formal. Where are they? Where are they? Tickets are ten dollars for the first one hundred people at the bookstore, and after that, they're fifteen. They're on sale right now. Right now. Like right now. Can Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Just I'm gonna. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Station Party House in Spencerport. Food, buffet, music, dancing, pictures, all the Christmas hoopla. It's Sunday, I can't get my ticket, but I'll get it after chapel. Like the rest of you. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Bye, Riley. Who's in my office? It's really dirty in here. Hello? Hello? Trevor! You're in my office! I am in your office. What a coincidence! What a coinky dink. What's happening on campus? There's an event. I think you know what it is. It's Coffee House. Tell me about it. It's on Saturday, November 23rd at 7 p.m. in Cox Auditorium. There's gonna be coffee. From guess who? Is it Mr. Edith? It's Mr. Edith. Mr. Glenn Edith himself. Glenny. Actually, I don't think he's going to be there. Is Glenn Edith a person? If you would like to sing, or maybe dance, or just be funny, or whatever talent it is that you do, who do you have to email to sign up? Michaela Hartwell. That's Hartwell underscore Michaela. At roberts.edu. Um, well, well, thanks Trevor. You're welcome. Do you want to help me with the outro? Sure. Um, okay. Well, uh, that's all we have for Salty Snaps. Follow us on social media. You know the drill. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. Well, good morning. Welcome to chapel. Can you all stand and sing together with us?
every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before Him Every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates. Open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His love grace. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Bow before the Lord. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Be seated. Take a look at this video. Right. 
to make sure we took a moment to pause and honor our veterans and those who are currently serving in the military. We want to say thank you uh, for your courage. Thank you for your self-sacrifice and being willing to lay down your life on behalf of the others. And so just thank you. Can we give all the veterans a round of applause here? Also, this morning, I want to extend a warm welcome to our pre preview day students who are here visiting. Thank you so much for coming to our campus. We hope you feel welcome. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we got a wonderful group, a wonder wonderful community here. I won't brag on them too much, but I certainly love serving at this institution as many other folks. As we continue in our worship, let's pray. Father God, uh, we thank you uh, because you are good. No matter what it seems like, no matter how on or off our perception may be, the truth never changes that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you for the men and women who have chosen to serve uh, this country uh, just by the giving of themselves. We ask that you would be with them, that you would comfort them, that you would look upon their needs wherever they may be, and that you would guide them wherever they may be at this moment. Father, we also want to say, have your way this morning. Whatever you want to say to us, do in us, please do, because we know it will be for our good. Thank you for these preview students who are seeking to make important decisions about their future. We ask that you would lead them, give them discernment, give them wisdom, and may they have a peace about where you're calling them to. And we give you praise and glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's worship. Let's stand and continue to worship this morning. Yeah. 
turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working. even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Oh, we make miracle work, promise keep. You're the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. Father, this morning, in the midst of all the voices, in the midst of pain, trials, God, we set our hearts and our minds today to look to you and to believe what your word says about who we are. We are loved by you call us your own. We thank you, God. Yeah, I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure Some of every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Oh, and you see, I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling. 
God standing in this place this morning once again thank you that you didn't leave leave us without a word without a promise without telling us who you are about the love that you have for us and the price you paid because of that love we stand today assured of your perfect love you, God. And everyone said amen. Amen. You can be seated. If I asked you to tell me your story, what would you say? Everyone has a story. Put another way, everyone's life is a story. But most people don't know how to read their life in a way that reveals their story. They miss the deeper meaning in their life, and they have little sense of how God has written their story to reveal himself and his own story.
right, good morning. morning. I want to say thank you to Joe, Holly, and Anthony for leading us in worshiping through singing this morning. Thank you. Very powerful. Always good to be reminded of our identity in Christ. Now, I got to give you guys an apology this morning because today we were supposed to have Pastor Bernard McNeil speaking to us in chapel. Uh, But Pastor B, as I call him, he called me this morning. He just got in from New Jersey attending his mother-in-law's funeral. And so he asked if he and I could switch. So Pastor B will be here on Wednesday if you're looking forward to hearing him. You just have to come back out Wednesday. Uh, But now you're stuck with me. But it's all good. You'll survive. Um, I want to take a little bit today to share some of my story very personal. Um, I really struggled with whether I should share it or not. Um, It's a valuable story to me, one that I will never forget, Um, but I think it may be useful for you this morning, so I feel at peace. But before I do that, I want to draw your attention to a particular passage in Scripture, uh, Luke chapter 22. Uh, This is very near and dear to my heart, but this is, we get a kind of a, a glimpse of a conversation between Jesus and Peter. Jesus and Peter. Peter, as many of you know, was a disciple of Jesus. And as a disciple, uh, Jesus called them to follow him because he really believed that they could do what he did. He was really teaching them how to live the way that he lived and how to do the kinds of things that he was doing. Now, if you know anything about Peter, you know Peter was kind of this outspoken guy. He he wasn't afraid to step out and lead. He often ended up with his foot in his mouth. And so in this particular passage, we're just going to just look at it really short. And uh, it's intense, uh, but let's look at it. Looking at Luke chapter 2, verse 31. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, Let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times. You will deny that you even know me. Now, confession, I wish I could have read that like Al Pacino. Because this is just such an intense scene here that you're reading this. And just to convey that with all the emotion, I feel like Pacino could do justice to that. But that's just my own thing, you know. Uh, My own quirkiness, but just flow with me here. So Jesus says to Peter, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. And he says, but I prayed for your faith. Now, when I first read this scripture some time ago, my question was, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are you praying for their faith? Shouldn't you be praying that they won't be sifted? Like Jesus, that would be a better prayer. That was just my question. But here we go. The year is 1994. I have just graduated from high school, and I am on my way to college. My parents are taking me to Springfield, Missouri. Southwest Missouri State was the name of the school. Uh, Now it's known as Missouri State University. But I wanted to get as far as I can, could, away from home. Um, I consider myself a very uh, Christian young man. I was a good boy, so to speak, Um, thought that, you know, I was following God with all that I knew and the best way that I could. And I remember the day when I stepped onto that campus and uh, I walked into my dorm, which was Wells, and uh, I stayed on Wells Center, the fourth floor, and we called it the Fourth Center Projects. You know, it used to be like Fourth Center Projects because it was the worst of the dorms, but that's just our, that was our nickname for it. Um, But I remember that immediately right away I hooked up with some Christian friends. We started a Bible study. We were doing some good stuff. But slowly I began to break away from them. And I found that without that community, 
my life began to take a slide little by little. Now, I can't tell it all, so I'm just going to speed right up here. So I remember this one particular Friday. It was further along in the semester. And I remember we were just kind of hanging out. I went down to my guy's LT. I went to his room to hang out with LT. You know, we would always clown around, act a fool a little bit, telling jokes, stuff like that. And uh, as I was there, there was this particular young lady who was there who was very attractive. And uh, she, she came at me. Um, and I responded. And I remember responding, and I was just like, oh, okay, what's up? And I knew that I shouldn't have been responding in the way that I was responding. But I just kept going. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm inviting the young lady to my room. And my guy, LT, he used to call me Wiz because I would quote Bible verses all the time. And if I don't know if you've seen the Wiz, uh, it's the black version of the Wizard of Oz. And the Scarecrow was played by Michael Jackson. And the Scarecrow, Michael Jackson, he would always pull out like he was stuffed with quotes. And he would always pull out a quote and say it. Well, my friend was calling me the Wiz because he said I was like that with Bible verses. It was just his joke. But anyway, as I'm going up to my room with this young lady, he says to me, gee, what about God? And I'm like, man, forget that. And we went to my room. And in my mind, I was just like, I'm tired. This is it. I'm I'm about to do this. Forget it. Now, I love working with college students because of the leadership potential in the room. Every one of you has a call to be leaders. And there are two aspects to leadership, competence and character. Competence and character. Competence is the skill at which you perform and also the knowledge about the skill which you perform. But character is about who you are. Not the persona of who you are. You know, I'm the smart person. I'm the successful person. I'm the athlete. I'm the hip-hop head. You know, I'm this type of person. It's not the persona, but it's really who you are. And God wants the type of leaders who are great in, in competence and great in character. Now, I'm in this moment here, and I'm headed up to my room with this young lady. We get into my room. She sits on my bed, and I confess I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm about to do it, whatever it is. And so she's sitting on my bed, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, and I'm making the moves. And all of a sudden, she's on my bed. I'm next to her. And I'm thinking, and this is like going down in slow motion to me. Should I get that phone? Nah, we not getting that phone. Bring. Somebody getting the call right now. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, do I get it? Nah. Bring. And I say, oh, let me grab this phone. And I pick it up, and it's my brother. He's like, what's going on, man? And all of a sudden... I'm hit with such conviction. And I say, hold on, dude. Put him on hold. I look at the young lady. I said, I'm sorry, but you got to leave. I'll explain it to you later. She leaves, and I get on the phone with my brother, and we talk, but I don't tell him anything. I hang up the phone, and that moment, all I can tell you is that I felt exposed. Because I felt compromised. I had a glimpse of the me, the shadow me that I didn't know or I had never seen before. In this moment, it was just like I lost my complete mind and I was going for it. And if it had not been for that call, who knows what would have happened. But anyway, I'm so messed up and I'm hearing a... a, a bunch of voices in my head. You, you're not a real Christian. Oh, how, 
How, how could God have any confidence in you that you could represent him? Ah, you, you're nothing. You, you're, you're just a fraud. You were faking the whole time. You know, in my room, that's Friday night, Saturday. I don't really leave to do anything. I just stay in my room soaking in my sorrow. Why? Because I feel that I let God down. That night, I get a friend, I get a call from my friend, Tamisa, she's like, she's from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I can't help but kind of imitate people when I tell these stories, but she calls me, she says, hey, man, we going to church tomorrow, you going to go? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go, pick me up. And she's like, cool. So Sunday morning comes around, I hop in the car, and she's talking, and she's like, yeah, I invited a friend, I hope she come to church today, and she's just talking, and I'm not really hearing what she's saying. I'm like... (laughs) I'm not hearing what she's saying. I'm just kind of soaking. I'm, I'm just messed up, right? And so I go into church. We all sit there, and it's praise and worship is going, and I really can't get, get into it. I can't sing because I feel like in my heart I'm messed up. I'm exposed. And it's, it's a small church, so you can hear the door every time it opens. And this one time the door opens, and guess who walks through the door. You already figured it out, right? (laughs) And she comes right to our row, and I'm sitting down, and I see her. I don't even make eye contact. I just kind of do one of these here like this. She goes by and sits on the other side there, and I don't even look. And I'm just like, oh, I'm messed up. (laughs) Like, what was I thinking? God, How could I do this? If it wouldn't have been for that phone call, who knows what this moment would have turned into. And so I am there. I'm really jacked up, and I can't do anything. And all of a sudden, somebody passes me this note, and it's from her. And I open up the note, and it says, don't worry. You don't have to explain. I understand. And man, I'm like, I'm really jacked up now. I'm like, God, how can I be this man of God that I long to be in my heart if I got this kind of stuff going on on the inside? And so I spend time moping around. I'm moping. And um, I remember I went back to my dorm room, and I was just cleaning up because when I'm in a bad mood, I clean up. So I'm cleaning up, and I look inside this shoebox, and I see this letter. It was a letter written to me by my mother. Now, let me tell you about Mama Coleman. Mama Coleman is the truth. Mama Coleman is the real deal. It's like Mama Coleman knows stuff before stuff happened. I'm not kidding you. I remember one time growing up in Chicago, some cold winters, my mom, she used to make, my brother and I, he's two years younger, she used to make us wear these you know, skull caps, and we felt like nerds because she'd pull them all the way down over our ears and over our eyes, and we'd wait till we get around the corner, take them off and put them in our backpack. One day we got home, and my mom was like, boys, I was praying, and the Lord showed me something. And we're like, here we go again. What, what happened? <laughs> and she's like, I know that when y'all get around the corner, y'all are putting them hats in your book bag. And I was like, oh, man, Lord, Serious? <laughs> serious? But anyway, I I got plenty of stories about Mama Coleman. But anyway, Mama Coleman, in this letter she written me, she wrote me, it said these words. It says, you are leaving Illinois, the land of Lincoln, and you are going to Missouri, the show me state. Let your prayer be, God, show me me that I may come to know you. Oh, man, I read that, and I just dropped to my knees and started weeping because now I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm a fraud, (laughs) and I'm crying, and I'm weeping, and it just plunges me either into more just darkness, frustration. I'm just jacked up, and I remember I was leaving to go to the cafeteria, and I saw this guy, big dude named George. He's also from Oklahoma. I didn't really hang out with George because George just wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, George was tall, loud, just kind of like a giant. And George was like, hey, G-man, what's up? 
I'm like, what's up, George? He said, man, something wrong. He said, I ain't seen you. You ain't got that big smile on your face. Your eyes not bright. What's wrong? And I was just like, man, no. he's like, come on in my room. And I went into George's room. I never stepped into George's room. But I'm just so jacked up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to follow George. And so I went, and George asked me what was going on, and I shared with him what happened. And George said, let me ask you something. Do you think what you did surprised God? And all of a sudden, it just disrupted my pity party. And I was like, no. He was like, but it sounds like you're surprised. I was like, yeah. And then George began to read this passage to me about Peter, about Satan asking to sift him as wheat. Now, when you sift something, you're purifying it. Now, I believe that Satan wants to sift God's people, not to purify them, but to separate them from God. But God in all of his wisdom and sovereignty knows that the, the sifting really helps to purify his people. And this incident that happened in my life allowed me to see some major character flaws. And true, we'll be working on our character till we out of here. But in that moment, it allowed me to see some things in my heart that was like, oh, that needed to be exposed. God is really, I'm, I'm really not that good of a fella as I thought I was. There is real wickedness in my heart if I don't take the time to allow you to purify it and clean it. And you notice Jesus told Peter, he said, I prayed for your faith. Why? You see, Peter, he ends up just like Jesus said, denying him and ready to give up. He just totally walked away and Jesus had to go pursue Peter. And he restored Peter. But see, if Peter didn't hold on to his faith in God, Peter would have forfeited his call. He would have gave up. And you said to me, Pastor G, why are you telling us this? I'm telling you this because there are moments in life where your shadow is exposed and real character flaws are exposed. And maybe you see sides of yourself that you didn't think were there. Maybe you have a flare up, you go into rage. Maybe you say something that hurts somebody and all of a sudden you're realizing, whoa, what do I do with that? Well, see, those moments are just as important as the classroom moments. Because these are character-building moments where God is bringing impurities out of you so that you can be pure gold. As a kid, I used to be a part of a, what we call the angelic choir. And we were a bunch of little kids, and we used to sing songs that we really didn't know what they meant. And one of those songs that we used to sing was a song by James Cleveland. And the song was called, Please be patient with me. You know, as a kid, you're singing it, bumping into each other, doing, you know, <laughs> please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth. I shall come forth as pure gold. Oh, no, I wasn't. Come on now. I wasn't wanting an applause, but anyway, <laughs> y'all are too much. But this is the deal. You don't get pure gold without fire. Because in the heat is where the impurities rise to the surface and you're able to skim them off. And the person who's heating up that gold, they know it's ready when they can see their reflection. And God is doing the same thing for you and I, where there's moments where our hearts are exposed, and it's not to destroy us. 
Although Satan would love it to destroy us, he'd love for you to give up. He'd love for you to lose hope. He'd love for you to sulk in a pity party. But God's love for you never changes. God is the only one who embraces the best and the worst parts of you. He isn't disgusted by any of it. But he's working on your character. Why? Because we are all made in the image and likeness of God. And he's working on us because he wants to see that reflection. I don't know where many of you are on your journey. But I want to encourage you to hang in there. Don't give up. We got a long life ahead of us, God willing. And there's a lot of character building that God will be doing on us. But he loves you. His love doesn't change. He has hope and a future for each and every one of you. But hang in there. When you're exposed in those moments, let God do the purifying. As a matter of fact, don't isolate yourself. Find someone who you could come along to, who could come alongside of you and help you deal with those character flaws and character issues. Because God's not done with you. But when he is done, you'll be pure gold. Now, before I dismiss you, I want to tell all of our preview students and parents, uh, please do not leave. You all need to remain here because there's some things that you're going to take care of. And I want to pray for us. Father, we thank you that you are a great and mighty God, but you are also a loving God who sees us. Your word says that the dark and the light are alike to you that you see just as clear. Lord, you know the things that we wrestle with in our heart. I pray that you would help us not to lose heart, but to be patient, to have patience for ourselves, but that we would allow you to continue to work on us so that we can be a reflection of who you are to those around us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you.